morning and welcome to Sunday Vespers. We're going to take a little break from our, our look at the parables uh, tonight and next Sunday night um, because it's Christmas time and we'll talk a little bit about Christmas. Uh, when, I, when I think of Christmas, one, one of the thoughts that comes to my mind is uh, music. I, I associate Christmas with music. Uh, carols and all kinds of songs have been written about Christmas. Uh, so for me, it's difficult to think about the season of Christmas without thinking about music. And Dr. Luke, in his account of the Gospel of Jesus, um, introduces songs to us, although some of them really appear to be more like prayers. And then I get thinking about that. And if you've listened to uh, prayers from Mid-Eastern cultures, a lot of them sound like songs. That they, they, they kind of sing their prayers sometimes. Um, and indeed, some English translations of Scripture give us little headings, such as the Song of Mary. Um, and I'll, I'll read some of those for us. And we'll start with that one. It's also known as the Magnificat. Um, it's recorded in Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 47 through 53. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he's looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Song of Mary. I, I, I really like how she starts, especially my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Another one is, is the Song of Zechariah. Now, Zechariah was the father of John the Baptist, and there's a, there's a whole story there with the birth of John the Baptist. Um, and, and then there's this, this prayer slash song. Um, Luke tells us his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Um, and again, in some scriptures it has the heading, the, the Song of Zechariah. So here we go. Um, again, in the Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He's raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown mercy, promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And then there's the song that uh, we probably know, at least it's the chorus um, that we all know very well from Luke chapter um, one, or chapter two rather, verse 14. And uh, let me find the right page here. There we go. It's a song of the angels to the shepherds. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those he favors. Short song, the refrain probably. And one more, uh, the song of Simeon. Also in Luke chapter 2, verses 29 through 32. Now the background to this is that uh, Simeon was a, a very devout, holy person uh, to whom the, the Holy Spirit revealed that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And then inspired by the Holy Spirit, when Joseph and Mary took Jesus to the temple on the eighth day for circumcision, um, Simeon was there and he took Jesus in his arms and blessed the Lord and sang this song beginning with verse 29 of chapter 2 of the Gospel according to Luke. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, 
For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. A great little song that includes us. Well, Christmas and music, they, they, they kind of go together, I, I believe, a lot. And uh, I want to take from just that background of the music that Luke shared with us, um, the idea of Christmas carols. Many have been written. Um, I believe that the ancient ones are some of the better <laughs> ones that have been written. But there's some new ones that are very good, too. Um, from 1975 till now, um, I have uh, rounded up troops within the parish where I was pastoring. And uh, during the Christmas season, we've loaded the vans and cars and sometimes school buses and uh, have gone to homes to, to sing Christmas carols. Um, this year will be the only, only the second time in all that time, in 45 years, that I've not been able to do that this year because of COVID. Uh, the other time was because I was very sick. They still, the church still went, but I couldn't go. Um, and as I think back about all those trips we took and all the, the front yards and backyards and patios we stood on and sang, the, the halls of uh, uh, nursing homes we walked through and sang in, uh, all the different places we sang carols to folks. There are so many wonderful stories to be told. Uh, just wonderful things that God did as we sang the songs of Christmas to, to hurting people. Um, there's so many wonderful scenes to remember. Um, so many blessings in the lives, not only of the recipients, not only of the folks we sang to, but as I watched our people, the blessings that came back to us who were singing, to, to the folks who were singing the Christmas carols. And so I'm going to really miss that tradition this year. It's really going to leave an empty place for me. And, and so here's my challenge. My challenge tonight for us is, during this Christmas season, ask the, ask the Holy Spirit if, if he would show us some way to share the song of Christmas. Be creative. Let, let, let the Holy Spirit inspire you. Maybe by playing a song for, for somebody that needs to hear one. Um, if you're good at singing, uh, sing over the phone to somebody. Be creative, but find a way to share the song of Christmas with somebody or some bodies um, this Christmas season. And, and so I, I, I just want to pray for us about that, that, that we'll be open to the Lord doing that. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Christmas and music, they just go together um, because it is a joyous time. It is a time that you have uh, reminded and you remind us again and again that you came into the world to be our Savior. And so help us, Lord. Help, help your people uh, to find unique ways this year to share the song. Uh, maybe maybe play a cassette. Well, no, we don't even have them anymore, Lord. But uh, I don't even know if we have CDs. But whatever we got now in technology to play something for someone over the phone even or, or zoom in and, and, and share a song. Or if we're good at singing ourselves, to sing to somebody. Uh, via um, the technology we have. Help us some way, Lord, to share the song. Most importantly, Lord, help us to share the song of Christmas by who we are in Christ, by that song living and abiding and, and reigning in our own hearts and in our own lives. We ask it in our Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. We'll see you next week.